What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we're working on this Toyota Prius and we're going to be showing it some love today. So it's a close friend of ours vehicle that we're going to be putting some work into. It had a little bit of a side swipe on the driver's side door and fender. So we're gonna do our best to hopefully fix that and maybe make it look a lot better. And then we'll be doing a minor paint correction on it. It is a black vehicle, so there's lots of swirls, there's lots of defects on the paint, but we're going to make this thing look so much better. So let's get started. Hi, buddy. So guys, let's look at the Prius. Let's look at the damage here on the driver's side door and fender. It was side swiped, so yeah, you can feel these scratches, so we'll see what we can do. There has been some paint removed there, a little bit of dentage in there. There's some marks up here as well. We'll see if this is just surface or if that actually removed the paint. I'm actually not quite sure yet until we start working on it. But as you can see in the sun, lots of haziness, swirls, water spotting, a lot of stuff going on. Same goes with the front. There's a lot of stone chips and things like that on the paint. Plastic is a little faded out, so we will take care of the plastics. Same with some of this stuff here. We'll see what we can do in helping this trim. This stuff, yeah, look how oxidized and faded that is. We'll see what we can do with this stuff. So we got some bird bombs. This has completely failed. So we have some ideas for this little rear spoiler here. Standard Prius wheels. They're pretty dirty up here, so we will clean these up. And as you can see, this paint definitely needs some help. So let's wash it decon it, prep it, get it ready for some polishing and fixing of the defects here. And we'll have this vehicle in for about two or three days and we will make it look beautiful again. So let's get started. We start off as usual taking care of the engine bay. We thoroughly rinse and then apply super clean four to one and power wash all of the surface and grungy areas. Don't worry about getting things wet inside engine bays. Modern day car engines can handle getting wet like this. Again, use common sense and keep the wand far enough away so as not to damage anything. We also degrease the tires, wheel wells, and door jams, and then blast them out with the power washer. still don't feel comfortable cleaning the engine bay like this, then you can simply use whatever APC or degreaser you'd like, brushes and towels, and maybe even a steamer to clean the engine bay delicately. The rinsing stage is very important. It removes the majority of dirt and grime from the paint. After the initial rinse, we spray our degreaser on all the bottom panels to again start the process of removing grime and road film.
Next, we foam the vehicle up with our shampoo. We're using Meguiar's Hyperwash. It cleans extremely well and the dilution ratio is excellent. Now is foaming just for show? Of course not. This makes the wash process easier and faster. Instead of having multiple buckets to wash, we apply the soap onto the vehicle and have one bucket to rinse the mid out after a few panels. We also foam up the wheel bucket. I like to do this because it adds lubrication to the cleaning process and it prevents kickback from those long barrel brushes. Now as we wash, we use a clay towel to mechanically decon the paint. This removes small bonded bits that can't be removed with traditional washing. The paint is now smooth and ready to be polished after this step. Remember, the majority of heavy particles, dirt and grime have been degreased and blasted away with the rinsing stages. All that's left is a thin film that needs direct agitation to remove completely. No heavy dirt or particles are scratching the paint by this time. If you have your own method that works for you, great. This method works extremely well for us and the results speak for themselves. If you want to continue with other chemical decontamination, go right ahead. We also use a soft work stuff brush to agitate all the cracks and seams where dirt hides away from the wash mitt. Now on to the wheels and tires. We're using a product called Owee Hulk. It's a strong wheel and tire cleaner. It did a great job removing brake dust and grime. So if you're interested in any of the tools or products you see us using, head to the description below and we'll have everything linked down there for you. Now after the wash process, we bring it in to inspect and start the next phase. Except old deaf mister has other plans. So we're using Extreme Solutions White Rally to dress the plastics of the engine bay. It's a water-based, delicious smelling dressing. It leaves a nice satin finish after it dries down. Now if you're watching this and you live in the Richmond, Virginia area, give us a call to schedule your detail. Now moving on to the clay bar phase. Now we're claying all the lower portions. I decided to do this after the wash phase so I can show you what it was pulling off the paint. We're using lithium 4 clay with a little O&R as a clay loop. All right guys, so uh, yeah, I think big improvement on the clay bar. It worked really, really well. It didn't crumble on me. So again, I'm, I'm not sure if they redid the formula on the clay or not. Maybe I got a bad batch of clay before, I don't know. Um, I, I wasn't too happy with it, but this is much, much better. So it feels a little bit more malleable and it's not breaking apart like the other stuff was. So lithium, thank you for listening and improving on your stuff. That's what detailing product companies are supposed to do because we're the ones working with your products all the time. And if something isn't working quite the way that we want it, then we're not going to use it. We're not going to buy it again so definitely the clay is a huge improvement i'm really liking it and really liking this idea in separating the clay bars into separate packaging awesome awesome idea so the packaging on the clay bar itself is amazing excellent guys thank you and again this stuff really really nice um, i probably could have even cut it one to one or even more with water to use as a clay lube i know some people may say that so maybe you don't want to use it straight because you can definitely you know water this down or do it on a wet car that's already been washed and rinsed and the water is hanging on you can spray this on and kind of use the water already on the panel to dilute this i do that too with a lot of different uh clay bar lubes so not a problem all right guys thank you very much again this stuff is awesome car is now clayed it's dried it's going to sit overnight because it's already well, it's almost 6.30 right now, and uh, I'm starving, and I'm going to go in to have dinner. But let me give you a quick tour around the vehicle and show you what we're going to be doing to this vehicle. So first of all, yeah, that needs to be taken care of. That's horrible. 
And I know it's pretty deep in some areas, the scratching, because you can really feel it in some areas, especially up here. These corners got really gouged up, so I'll have to put some touch-up paint on these corners, uh, the edge here. So we'll see what we can do in wet sanding and making that look better. And the rest of the paint is needing much help. So we will give it a minor paint correction, polish it all up, make it look really nice. We'll see if we can improve this glass a little bit also. And check out what we're playing with here, guys. We have some products from Extreme we're going to be using. They're compounds here. This is ice. This is their finishing polish glaze. Now we also have their Puris uh, ceramic detail spray. We may use that on some portions. We're going to hit the plastics with lithium trim serum. And you already saw the engine bay that we use White Rally, their water-based dressing. I love this stuff. It smells delicious. Since this is a friend's car, we are going to uh, kind of test some stuff even though he might be selling it, so I may not see this again. But it's gonna be fun anyway, just to test some products and see what they can do. Now you also notice my little air polisher here that I just picked up. Got this on Amazon, it was like under 40 bucks, and it has a three inch, two inch, and one inch. And I have all my little pads here that I'm excited to try out and use on some of the small areas of the vehicle. And we'll be cutting mostly with the microfiber discs and probably using these orange pads or maybe maybe these pads to polish. We'll see. We got so many different choices here. We'll just uh, experiment and have fun with it. So guys, that's what we're going to be using on the vehicle. But first we're going to have dinner and then we will see you guys tomorrow or in like one second. Morning, guys. We're going to start on the paint this morning. Now we have a couple of different products we're going to be using and basically just to play around with, we have the Extreme Solutions, uh, Extreme Microfiber Cutting Cream and Polish. And this stuff is great because it isn't all in one. It does have some protection built in. So I won't use it on the entire vehicle because I do want to use some other sealants and maybe some other spray coatings on here. But I am going to use it on a couple of panels to see what it can do. I'm primarily going to be using the dynamic cut because this is considered a compound and I want to get as many of the defects out as possible and then we will finish it with their ice. I have heard some good stuff about this product and I'm going to be using it as the finished polish or at least try it out and see how it responds to the paint because you never know. I say I may use these products but if they're not responding well to the paint I might switch it up to something else. That's just what happens with Paint corrections and polishing is you start with something and you might have to change it up. So let's begin on the hood. So we started with the Extreme Solutions Microfiber, Extreme Microfiber Cutting Cream and Polish. And yeah, I'm using a foam pad but that's just because I want to see what it can do with this. And I kind of already know what it can do. I've already been using it and it produces an awesome, awesome finish. Is it enough cut? We'll see. Now, granted the hood is full of pitting and all sorts of other defects. So here's the before. As you can see, it's full of swirls and hazing and all sorts of marks and granted, it is full of pitting. I can't do anything about that. That's like road rash. You can still see there's a little bit of stuff I still need to wipe off, but that's just with the orange pad and a few passes. And already it cleared up all of this mess. So much improved. So I'm gonna kick it up to the microfiber pad and see if it does anything more. Now this is after using the microfiber cutting pad. So it definitely introduces its own marring. Yeah, so with the foam pad, it finished much better, but this paint is pretty soft. So it's definitely going to tear it up a lot more. So let's continue with the foam pad because those are actually getting better results. Now I'm going to switch it up to the dynamic cut and use that on the foam pad. And let's see what that does.
Now the dynamic cut was a little bit more difficult to wipe off, but it doesn't have any protection in it. There's no waxes or sealants or anything. It is just a pure compound. So again, it left its own defects. Could I work it longer? Probably, but you know, I like products that uh, work just a little bit quicker without having to work it so long. But again, this paint is soft, obviously. So I'm going to clear this up with the Extreme Solutions Ice. I'm going to switch out to a nice soft blue polishing pad. So that's huge improvement. Now I did do a bunch of different steps on here, but that was to kind of narrow down what I want. That's what it was before. That's what it is now. This is the hood. The sides, we're going to deal with this in a moment. The sides may not be as bad. That's just uh, white marks from drying the paint. The clear coat is very, very soft, so you shouldn't see any pitting on the panels here, but I'm sure there's going to be many other defects to deal with. So we may switch up our method as we go around the vehicle. It is soft clear coat, so we do have to deal with that. So guys, this paint is giving me a hard time. It is super finicky. It might be just the hood. I don't know if it was repainted. I finally got it to the point where I just, I have to stop. I can't go any further because the more I touch it, the more it, I don't know, mars or gets kind of finicky around, I don't know, weird areas. So I'm not gonna touch it anymore. There's a little bit I just need to wipe right there. But yeah, it's just annoying. Not sure what's going on here, but at least it's cleared up a little bit. Let's move on to this area here. So here's what we're dealing with. Pretty bad. It was side swiped and man, that's a lot of defects. So I don't want to go too crazy and too deep, but let's see what we can do with say 3000 probably won't be enough. We may have to go up to 2000. So it looks like I don't have any 2000 grit in the round three inch discs, but I do have some 2500 in the uh, sheet form. So we'll use that. So I put the sanding paper in some warm water to soak, and I am gonna use just water here. And let's start, where do I wanna start? Let's start here. Easter. What are you doing? You stink. What happened to your butt? Mister, go, come on. Sorry, buddy. So let's just see. Use this as a little squeegee. Yeah, that is really really deep. So hopefully we'll improve it. Let's attack this side. All right. I might need to go a little bit further here, but let's not, let's not go too far. Now I do have some 3000 in the sanding discs. So let's use our little air DA. And let's hit this with 3,000 gently. That 
that's actually looking pretty good. Again, I'm not going to go too crazy on this. Let's compound and polish this and see where we're at. So we're going to use some dynamic cut. That's really deep, guys. That is really deep. I can't really go any further than this safely. I don't think I would want to risk it. Let's see if I can go a little bit further. Just a little bit. We use lithium trim serum to restore and protect the faded trim parts, including the windshield cowl and window trim. I also started the polishing process on the bumper, being gentle around the area that had missing paint. I didn't want to make anything worse by polishing too aggressively around that area. Ah, the perils of corded polishers. When you're compounding, polishing, or waxing, Make sure to throw that polishing cord over your shoulder. I didn't use them at this time, but you can use the detailer's cord snaps to secure the cord to your shirt and pants so it doesn't slip and rub against the paint. Last cleaning could be a chore. Make sure to use plenty of towels and switch them out often when they get saturated with cleaner and grime from cleaning. Having good lighting will help you spot streaks and smudges that you may have missed. So the paint is now polished. It's not perfect. There's a lot of defects in the paint. So I said it was going to be a minor paint correction, but I really can't go too far with it. The hood, the top of the trunk, the hood, the top of the vehicle, and even side, some of the, the hood, the top of the vehicle, and even some of the side uh, panels all the way in the bottom. Stop making fun of me. I can't get this right. The hood, the top of the vehicle, the sides of the doors, 
have a lot of defects, deep stuff that I'm just not going to attack. And this paint is so finicky, it's been giving me a hard time. So polishing, it's kind of an all-in-one, a little bit of more of an all-in-one. I compounded some areas and polished them, but not going any further. The paint is looking nice and glossy, so let's just protect it. And we're going to be using the Jade Ceramic Spray. And uh, this stuff is very interesting. So Jess already protected the rest of the vehicle and left the two doors and the fender here for me to demonstrate on to show, but she's already very happy with the product because it's so easy to apply. So let's show you guys how to apply this. I'll bring you in close. We have the quarter panel here. I'm going to just apply it like three little spritz on the towel itself and apply it like, um, kind of like the Meguiar's paint sealant and that aerosol can. I already forgot what it was called, but I really liked it. So you wipe it on evenly and then just wipe it off and that's it. It doesn't leave any type of smeariness. I'll have my little light here to check. And if there is, just go over it and lightly hand polish it out. If you over apply it, then you're going to have a hard time removing it. But other than that, wow. Not bad at all. Oh, hi, buddy. That's very easy to apply. I like that. That's nice. Okay, cool. I'm just going to put two light spritz of product. It does kind of have a funky smell. It's like a weird minty smell, but not that great of a smell. And just make sure to evenly apply it. It flashes away pretty quick, so it's very much like a traditional ceramic coating in the way that it applies, in the way that it looks when it's being applied, but it flashes away very, very fast. Which is nice because you're not chasing, you're not chasing, uh, you know, the coating around on the paint. Wow, all right. That looks nice and, nice and easy. Nice. I am really, I'm really loving this stuff. Hi. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Really complaining. Wow. Oh, boy. If you want to try this SiO2 spray coating, check out the links below and try it for yourself. We were able to fly around the vehicle pretty fast applying this protection. All right, well, that was pretty awesome. This stuff is amazing. So easy to use. So the other stuff that I was talking about, so it reminds me of Fast Finish, the way that it applies and wipes off and the way it looks on the panel. So this stuff is amazing. Love it, love it. You don't need a lot of it at all. It's a spritz, so it's barely anything at all. So. That much is how much I used on one vehicle. I mean, it wasn't even filled all the way up to the top. So that's probably less than half an ounce, which is awesome. To cover this entire vehicle, I love this stuff. Super easy to apply. 
If this applies with no smearing or anything like that, you have a light to check it, um, and you might use maybe one or two towels, then this stuff is a win. Love it. And uh, paint is looking nice and glossy, so that's good to go. We are going to do a little bit of the interior. It's not any type of a full interior. It's basically just kind of a courtesy vacuum. Clean some of the spots on the upholstery, but definitely tackle that back mat in the trunk. It's really bad. So we have a couple of different products we're gonna use on it here. In fact, let's use the OE, what is it called? Incredible. So this is a carpet cleaner. So we'll use that on the nasty carpet as well as maybe a few other products that uh, we have from Extreme. Let's tackle a little bit of the interior and that mat and get that all cleaned up. So we also tackled some stains on the upholstery. We used Turtle Wax Interior 1 Foaming Cleaner. It's great at attacking stains on difficult to clean upholstery. One of the benefits of this cleaner is you don't need to extract it. It dries leaving the fabric soft with no residue. So we're just about done with the interior, just doing a few more things, but cleaning up this upholstery with the Turtle Wax Interior One, it's turning out really nice. This seat, if you remember, had some really nasty stain here. It's still barely, barely there, but it looks so much better. This is almost uh, like a Alcantara type of suede feel to it. It's nice fabric, but it stains easily, but it's looking amazing. So this is just a light cleanup in here, nothing too extensive. All right, guys, the vehicle is almost done. Exterior is looking so much better, but it's still in really rough shape as far as the condition of the paint. There are a lot of defects that are not gonna come out. So a lot of the swirls in that has come out. You're left with some deep defects. I'm not gonna go try to chase it out. Well, it looks horrible like this, but I mean, it looks better. It's super glossy, but again, that's really deep defects there. So it's glossy, it's protected. The trim looks much better, but again, it has some damaged parts on the trim, but he's going to be selling this. Our friend who owns this will be selling it. So he just wants to get it all glossy, looking really, really nice to be able to sell. All the plastics here were treated with lithium trim serum. So they look really nice. And the headlights already look nice. So we didn't really have to do anything, just a light polish on those. But everything else looks really nice and glossy. Now, same goes with the back area. This mat back here was shampooed, as you saw. And we used the OE Incredible on one side, and then we used Extreme Solutions Tsunami Cleaner. And both of them are amazing cleaners. They both cleaned up beautifully. And we, of course, extracted this back area. This was really the worst of it. This is the only thing that we needed to use the extractor on.
All right, guys, so check this out. We are going to Plasti Dip this little rear spoiler here of the Prius because the paint faded on it and instead of repainting it, just use Plasti Dip and make it a matte finish. Plasti Dip is super easy to work with. The only thing you need to be concerned about is masking off. You don't have to be that precise. So let me show you what you can do with Plasti Dip and how to mask off. So guys, the first thing I'm going to do is rough tape this out first. I'm leaving about a half an inch of space here and I'll show you why I'm doing that. In here, I will mask off a little bit better because I don't want overspray in there. So I, I will mask off the inside of this a little bit better than the outside. So I will get into here a little bit more into this seam because there is quite a gap here. Now to get under here is a little bit more difficult. It's really hard to get the tape in there. I just tried and I couldn't really do it. So here's a tip. I have some paper, just regular printer paper, and I can actually get it all the way under that little lip there. So now all you need to do is place a little bit of tape just to hold it just here and I'll tape a little bit better but just to hold it there and then you can secure it a little bit better but this way it gets right up into there and you don't have to worry about pushing tape into that area at all. So now we have everything rough taped and I left a gap here. This you can cover up. Under here is completely covered with the paper um, underneath the little spoiler here so we didn't have to tape under there at all which is nice but now what we're going to use is this this you can get locally you can buy it online or you can just buy it at walmart which is where i bought it and it's designed for interior painting so it has the tape here already um, put onto the plastic and this plastic i forget how long it is but it will drape over enough so that overspray doesn't get onto the vehicle so that is one thing that i am concerned about with any type of spraying is overspray. I'm gonna lay it down right about there and go over the tape. Oh, look at that, it ripped. So, you know, not the most expensive stuff. Little issues, but not a big deal. So now that that is taped down, now we'll stretch out the plastic. Uh, that's about four feet or so. Oh, maybe longer. No, it's about four feet. So that will drape about four feet up, which is great. I'll do the same thing here for the side and the bottom. So we'll just have this little portion that we will Plasti Dip. The light you don't have to worry about. I'll show you how to remove the Plasti Dip from this. We can just Plasti Dip right over it. So guys, the masking is done and I know this may look like it's a little overboard, but trust me, if you have the plastic like this, just drape it over as much as possible because if a gust of wind comes or anything like that, the overspray will go over stuff. It's not a horrible issue to remove. It can be removed quite easily, but it's just a pain. You just want to avoid that completely. So you can take your can of Plasti Dip and just do a test pattern. You wanna apply it that light first. It'll probably be about three to four coats that I will apply on here. And the reason why I did the overlap here is because when it's time to remove, you don't need to be that precise about it. It will actually break right at this gap in here. I could have taped all the way to the gap. It really doesn't matter that much. So if you were doing it on paint and say there was emblems, then you rough tape an inch to half an inch around the emblem and I'll show you why. In this case, it wasn't completely necessary. I know some may say you could have just went right up to the line because there's a big, enough gap, a big enough gap in there, but I'm doing it on purpose to show you, so don't worry about that. So before I apply anything, I am going to wipe it down with a panel wipe or an isopropyl alcohol mixture that will remove any oils or anything that might be on here. 
and I'm going to drench it and then we'll let that dry completely. Just make sure that everything is nice and dry on the panel and then it's time to apply. Again, the first coat, very light. Barely any on there. You're just going to get a base coat. And that's it. That's the first coat. You notice that I pulsated. I didn't just do one spray. You have better control when you use it pulsating the trigger or the button here. So just light pulses like that. You don't want to overdo it because it's very hard to get an even coat if you are just drenching it and just holding down the button. You won't get even coats. So start with this first. Once it dries, we'll continue with the next. All right, so first coat is dry. Second coat, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier, but not much. All right, we'll leave it at that. And we'll go probably four coats. Don't be alarmed if you do see some dry areas, just go over it lightly, leave it like that. One tip, make sure to clean this nozzle a little bit. Just wipe it down because it will dry and it'll mess up your pattern. I just did that, so I just cleaned it and now the pattern is back to the normal widespread. So just make sure of that. So now I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. and you'll get a nice even coat. And if you want, if you're feeling comfortable, you can go a little bit heavier, a little bit slower, and it'll get you a nicer finish. All right, that's looking really good. Let's let that dry. Remember to clean that tip a little bit so it doesn't dry on there. Let's just show you what it's looking like. So you can see the, the heavier I applied it, it is a little bit heavier, but it's nice and even. So when that dries, that should be the final coat. That's looking really good. And you notice that I went heavy under here too, make sure to get all into here, and I covered that light. So I plasti dipped right over it. Not a problem, I'll show you how we remove that. And don't worry, as it dries, it starts to look patchy and weird. But if you have multiple coats on here and your last coat is just a nice heavier coat, it will turn out fine. So you can kind of see in the reflection, nice and even. Okay guys, we are now pretty much done. And the finish is really nice. I did put four layers Total. The last layer I put pretty heavy and I tried to be very even with it, but the last layer you can put a little bit of an, uh, a heavier coat. It's still kind of dry. You can see there's a little bit of wet spot still there. However, it does have a nice even look to it. So let's get all of this off and we'll pull it outside and let's see what it looks like. So now I'm going to show you why we did this, why we left the layer here. So I'm gonna very carefully just remove this tape here. So with this, I'll grab the second layer of tape here also. You're going to notice how this peels up. So let me get you in nice and close so you can see. So now as we peel this up, we layered this thick here because look how easy it will peel. Perfect. There's no line there, it's perfect. So if this was paint, and it would do the same thing. If you had a gap here that was just a little bit closer together, any break that you have here, any line, I know it's still not completely dry here, so don't worry about that. Um, any break here, it will peel clean. Isn't that nice? So if you're doing emblems like this, you wouldn't have to tape all the way to the edge here. You can tape about a half inch out all the way around, and it will do this nice and clean. And it's pretty stretchy, you can see. So down here you're going to see how much that was tucked under. So everything was really protected under here perfectly because it tucked right under. So here's the finished product. 
and it is looking amazing. Look how glossy it is. Now this, that's as much as I could diminish it. It's not as bad as it was, but it is deep into the paint, and if I try to wet sand that anymore, you could compromise it. So this really needs to be brought to a body shop. This is just a quick kind of cosmetic fix, and from a distance, you really don't even notice it. There's some more damage back here as well that it just took the paint right off. So nothing I can do for that. But check out the finish. Look how glossy it is. It's not a full paint correction, so if you do see swirls, that's just the way it is. But the paint, that's pretty decent. For a one step, or a little bit beyond a one step, I had to compound some areas, but there is a lot of heavy defects in the paint. Now, that rear spoiler looks really nice. Kind of a quick fix and kind of has that nice matte finish to it. So, not too bad, right? That's what Plasti Dip can do. Just kind of a quick fix, but everything else inside also nice and clean. The seats weren't horrible to begin with, but they're nice and cleaned and shampooed. The back area here, oh, so much better. Isn't that nice? Same goes with the interior here. Shampooed seats, they look amazing. Stains have been removed. Paint is nice and glossy. Awesome reflection. The trim looks really nice and dressed and clean. This exterior trim here was also restored. Same with this trim here. There is some more damage along here, so it looks better, but this would probably also need to be Plasti Dipped if you wanted it to look much better. So that's another option. You can Plasti Dip these areas. They'll have a nice matte finish like this. Wheels and tires are nice and cleaned and dressed. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for the video. The Prius is done and it's looking awesome. So very, very happy with the turnout on this vehicle. Again, this is a friend's vehicle that we are doing kind of an insurance job on because he was sideswiped and we want to make that look better. Didn't come out completely because it needs to be repainted. It's actually dented in, so it took quite a hard hit. But it looks better. We were able to diminish that look by wet sanding it and polishing it and making it look so much better. But again, realistic expectations. We can't make uh, a vehicle like this that has been sideswiped perfect again. We're detailers, we're not body shops. So all in all, I think it came out really, really nice. We did the repair job on that back spoiler. For some reason, the Prius uh, vehicles always have issues with those spoilers. They always fade. Don't know what type of paint it is uh, that they use on there, but that's always a hot spot, so it always fades. So Plasti Dip was a quick repair. You could do other options on that. If you wanted to add a glossifier on top of that Plasti Dip, you can actually gloss it up and make it kind of look like paint, but that's not really the effect. I actually like the way it looks like that with the matte finish. I think it looks kind of nice. So the inside of the vehicle also looks nice. We shampooed the seats, that back carpet, it's looking pristine. So he's gonna be super happy with it. I hope he is. If you're watching this, you better be happy with it. I'm sure you are. I mean, it's not coming out of your pocket. The insurance is paying for it, so I probably shouldn't have said that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the vehicle is good to go. He's most likely going to sell it anyway, so kind of a nice little flip on this car. So it's done. It's ready to go. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with others who may enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> click that bell. That way you get notifications each time these videos come out each week and you don't miss stuff. And check out the merch shelf down below and you can purchase t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, or even a pillow with Mr.'s face on it. So check that out. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.